in the name of our Lord Jesus. We give you praise. In Jesus' name. And the saints say, Hallelujah. And the saints say, Hallelujah. Come on, shout glory. Say, I live for Christ. I live for Christ. I'm a soldier of Christ. I live serving the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Are you glad to be around? Yes, sir. Church, are you glad to be around? Yes, yes, yes. Are you glad to be around? Yes, sir. We need to respond. Are you glad to be around? Yes, sir. The Bible says, I was glad. Psalm 122. When they said, let us go. Let us go to the house of the Lord. Glory. I was glad. 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 Are you glad this afternoon? I am glad. Yeah, yeah. That's I'm it. Excited. That's it. We are to be glad to come together. Amen. 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 We are to be glad to come together. Hallelujah. Praise I was glad. I was glad. I was glad. Now that's David speaking. He said he was glad. Let's do this again. Say, ha, ha, ha. ha, ha, ha. I'm glad to be in church. I'm glad, glad to be in church. church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even if you're not glad to be in church, implicate yourself. Yeah, that's what you do. Come on. Your mind is not in control. You are. Yes. Are you, are you hearing? So if you, you might have come in not feeling like you are excited to be in church, but you change it with your mouth. Yes. Hallelujah. That's what it means to be in control. Amen and amen. 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 Say, I'm glad to be in church. I'm glad, I'm glad to be in church. church. So if you're not glad to be in church, you say you're glad to be in church. And if you say it so long, you become glad to be in church. Yep. Because you implicated yourself. Amen and amen. amen. That's power words. Hallelujah. Words, people, <laughs> words has an effect on you. Amen and amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. Praise say, I'm glad to be in church. I'm glad to be in church. Good, good, good. I'm glad to be in church. Say, I'm glad. I was glad when they said. See, I'm, I, I'm glad when it's time for prayer. I'm glad when it's time for prayer. Oh, I'm, I'm glad when it's time for evangelism. I'm glad when it's time for evangelism. I'm glad when it's time for the word. I'm glad when it's time for the word. I'm glad when it's time for worship. I'm glad when it's time for worship. I'm glad to sing unto my Lord. I'm glad to sing unto my Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen and amen and amen. Amen and amen and amen. Amen, amen and amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. There are testos palette macudas. Alle brabte spite loge fra arti macus de paia te liga. Amen. 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 We are men of the spirit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we walk in the spirit. And we know by the spirit. Ha 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 ha. And don't say, I don't know that which is to come. For there is knowing by the Spirit. And the man that knows by the Spirit is able to work better by the Spirit. And as we go on into the days to come, prioritize the walk in the Spirit. For as we walk in the Spirit, we are more aware and sensitive of the part we are to play in the purpose and plan of God. And don't say I'm a nobody in the plan of God. For God will use a man that is available, humble and submitted to his will. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So walk in the light and in the confidence of the fact that the Father loves you. And don't despise instructions for he will speak to you by his word. Don't despise instruction. Don't miss out on the supernatural because you're seeking for the spectacular. For he will speak to you by his word. So look out. Be expectant to hear from the Lord. For he speaks through his word. <coughs> he will never leave you comfortless. He will never leave you comfortless. His love shows this as a fact. And you are to walk in that light. And even when your mind is saying to you, I think I'm alone in this. I think confusion has come. I think nobody's listening to me. I think I'm all alone. Remember, 
And when the mind goes in the direction that is outside of the world, it's your responsibility to bring it back into the world. And so you, you, you change what you say. Don't leave words ringing in your heart. You actually change, you respond to thoughts by words. And so when, because when you leave thoughts long enough without a response, that's how strongholds are built. And so you would say, no, I am not alone in this. For the Lord will never leave me nor forsake me. For the Lord is my strength and my way maker. And for the Lord is it me, I shall not want, for he maketh me to lie down. That's who the Father is to me. And that's how I make my way. And that's how I walk. And that's how I talk. And that's how I live. And then before I see, I already declare the victory. Can we get a believing amen? Amen. Amen and amen and amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hmm. All right. So take your Bible study. If you say, what did he say? Take your Bible study important to for God is waiting for you there. Hmm. To talk to you. Someone said, yeah. Sir, can you get to the point? Brand of habit. <laughs> just get to the point. So they are walking up and down and just rub out the horses. Yeah. Yeah. He will speak to you. Right? Never think. Never think that the Lord doesn't want to speak to you. Never. Talk yourself out of it. Are you hearing me? Talk yourself out of it. Hallelujah. God is speaking. It only is that we are in a noisy world. When we get serious, we take out the noise. You hear that he's shouting so loud. <laughs> How can a lover not want to talk to you? Have you seen a boyfriend who is in love with his girlfriend and doesn't talk to her? No, no. Your father loves you so much, he lives in you. We need to be the person holding information from you. It's just that the world has gotten more and more noisy. More and more noisy. More and more noisy. That's what it is. When you learn to take away all of the noise. That's why the Bible says, cast your cares on me. For I care for you. That's why he said that. Why? Not because God's stand is to fellowship with you already. But there is something that can block a man from fellowship with the Lord. It's the cares of this world. Worries. Anxieties. That's why he said to them, don't think of tomorrow like that. Don't say, how shall we, how shall we, how shall we leave it? That's not the way to go. He says the cares of this world and anxieties, it chokes the world. And make it of no effect. The world on its own is powerful. When we do we see that the world is not working in the life of a man? It's because cares, worries, anxieties. Never think, no matter who, even if no one tells you, never think anxiety is a good party to attend. Never. See, I refuse anxiety. I refuse anxiety. Never think of, if you are invited, turn it down unapologetically. Why? It will choke the word of God. The answer is in God's word. Look at it. And the Bible says to you, be, even when you are having issues, even before you get into the world, the Bible says be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer. Anxiety has, when you realize you are anxious, understand that you are not to stay there. It's ungodly to stay there. Are you hearing? God's word is instruction to live by. Say, Pastor Dio, but a lot of things are getting at me. Yes, but there is what to do. He says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your request, not unto the Lord. God will supply something, the peace of God, that surpasses all human understanding, will garrison your heart and mind. What do you do after that? As you pray, and the Lord garrisons your mind with peace, he says, whatsoever things are good, that are lovely, that are of good report, if any be of praise, brother, think on these things. Are you hearing me? Yes, so don't stay there and say I'm anxious. No. You stay praying. You step, you, you pray. In the if you don't know what to do, you pray. And then when you've got your heart garrisoned, then you go thinking on the words. Whatsoever things are lovely. God doesn't choose what you think, you do. Yes. Hallelujah. The Lord. I just quoted to you Philippians chapter 4, from verse 7. And eight and nine, you realize from verse six, it tells you there, be anxious for nothing. You say, Pastor, I can't do it. Yes, you can. The word of God will not tell you to do something you cannot do. 
Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Let me try this. You know, I always hear people say this when they're preaching, and I like it. Say, say, I, you know, are you hearing? He said, yeah, yes, pastor, I just like it. Are you hearing me? Yes, I like that. I like that. Okay, don't do it again. Okay. Yes, Amen. Yes, Look, he says, be anxious for nothing. Because, you know, reality, the realities of life is the fact that a man can be dropped into the ocean of anxiety. Information he did not expect. Realities of life, but he must be equipped to know how to navigate himself out of it. The Bible doesn't just say, don't be anxious, and leave you there. It says, be anxious but for nothing. So, by everything, in everything, by prayer. So, when I'm anxious, the first thing I can do, if I don't know what to do, is pray. I just keep praying, and praying, and praying. Then I get into the Word. Come on. What else can you do? You take what you have learned, the things you have known, the things you have understood, and you put it upon your lips so that you can think about it. Whatsoever things are lovely. Things that are praiseworthy. You know, you can work yourself out of depression. You can work yourself out of feeling down. Whatsoever things are lovely. The gospel is lovely. Come get a believing amen. 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 Whatsoever things are just. Isn't it a beautiful truth that you have been justified? You think on these things. Whatsoever things are, are praiseworthy, think on these things. You want to know what the next verse says? What you have seen and heard and learned and seen in me, do. So the Bible tells you how to get out of problems. How to get out. And the pro listen, the problem is in your mind. It tells you how to deal with it. Let, let's start off there. The reign of grace, but four. Hallelujah. Lord. Church, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Philippians chapter 7, 4. All right? We're in verse 6. It says, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be known unto the Lord. And the peace of God that passes understanding, the peace of God that surpasses the realm of the mind, will keep that mind. Yeah? Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Look at verse 8. And finally, brethren. You see, the instructions are together. So the first thing is, we have found ourselves in anxiety. The second thing is that he says we pray. The third thing is that he says that finally, my brethren, whatsoever things are true, the gospel. Whatsoever things are honest, the gospel. That are just, the gospel. That are pure, the gospel. Whatsoever things are lovely, the gospel. Whatsoever things are good report. The gospel. Say good report. Good report. Any be of virtue, if any be of praise, think on these things. Think about it. You know, you know, do you know that I can teach this as a Bible student? And I can take this as a way that you live. Whatsoever things are with good reports. That means bad reports meditated on is bad for you. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? Bad report meditated on because the Bible tells you there is what the saint should think about when he is feeling anxious. So, for example, something is making you anxious and you are still looking at it. What do you expect your heart to do? But it says you change it. Whatsoever things are virtue. Is there anything that is lovely? Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. God. Just, this is just impossible. You know, for example, you have, you're in a hard place with your spouse. For example, for example, just I'm just you know, for example, and you know what? I don't. I, you, people have said, "What? Well, I don't see anything good in you." But down, you, you should not talk like that. But let's imagine this happen. I too don't see anything good in you, and you're angry. And I, my heart is just. It. You can go back and look at your videos. Lovely moment of your marriage, and look at it, and look at when he said, "Oh, I love you." Your mouth is like, your head is like, you smile. I use that example to show you, to show you what you can do to your mind. So think about using the word of God on your mind. Hallelujah. So when he says, after thinking, it is stop there. You see, learn to fold the Bible in context. And you will get the results. You know, because people always say things like the word of God does not work. It's not true. The word of God is what raised Christ from the dead. It works, my point. Look at verse 9. Those things which you have both learned, we have verse 9 now, and you have received, and you have heard, and you have seen in me. That's why a believer should have a pastor, a local church, where which he can see. One of the reasons you come to church is to come and see. 
Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? Yes, it's to come and see. It's to come and see. I come to church to come and see. So I, as I see the way Sister Precious is praying, I see and learn how to pray. pray. So that's why you should have a fellowship. There is no Christian life that is supposed to be built on isolation. Because he says it there, whatever things you learned and you have received and you have heard. So there is a there must be a platform in your life where which you see, you hear. Hallelujah. Whatever things you have received, there will be truths that you have learned that has changed your mind from how you used to think. What does he say here? He says here, <laughs> and you have seen in me do. What will be the issue? He says the peace of God will be your reality. Hallelujah. Let me say it this way so you get it. When you are going through a hard time, don't say that's the time to leave church. Are you getting me? Church, are you understanding it? Because that's where you have to learn to see. Follow, follow it. It says, if you're anxious, okay, you're going through something, it says you should pray. Then after praying, it says, okay, the peace of God will guide in your mind. Then it says now you should think. Then it says you have to have people around you that you listen to, people that you copy, that you see what they're doing. Then he says, after when all of this is put together, the end result of your life will be peace. Hallelujah. But what do saints do? When saints get into a place, the first thing they want to do is isolate themselves. Now, it looks logical, but it's not scriptural. Wow. Are you hearing me? Yes. It looks logical, but it's not scriptural. It's okay to the flesh, but that's not the way of Christ. Because as long as you are seeing the law of the dream of Jacob, where he had goats or something, and then one of the goats had to see the other goats meet. I don't know if anybody knows that story. And they reproduce one another. What is that? What you see, you reproduce. Wow. That's the law there. What you see, you reproduce. Amen and amen. amen. So when you're getting, what's it? Listen, when you're in a tough place and you're feeling down, go to the local church where somebody will come in front of the altar and say, Rejoice in the Holy Ghost. And then you see Sister Dami leaping for joy. Amen. And then you now know what to do. Even if you don't know how to live, as you're looking at her living for joy, you see her. The Bible says, do it. What will be the end result? Peace. When you come to a local church, the first thing you should learn to do is to copy. If you see people laughing in the Holy Ghost, what do you do? Yeah. Laugh. You see them speaking in tongues. Because that's the instruction in the epistles. They must, see, it just does not end with prayer. It, just, it doesn't just end with the peace of God because you can actually mismanage the peace of God. How many people have felt peace about something and then they now start feeling afraid again? Yeah, because you can actually have peace about something and you take your thought life into other things and it corrodes that thing again. Not that the peace disappeared, it just submerged it. Yes, That's why it gives you like a double dose. So you, you actually do what you pray, then you do what? You actually do what? You then think on some particular things. Then you are with people so you can see. Then you do. Hallelujah. Praise Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Lord. And, you know, I want to share these things. It's not, you know, like I said, I, I think the Bible. You know, people think we're just, we're just trying to get into computer. No, it's not that. It's because the Bible says so. Hallelujah. Praise God. It, it's because the Bible says so. It says don't forsake the gathering together. As the manner of some is. So as of the writing of the book of Hebrews, there were people who used to forsake the garden of the brethren. Why? Why, can, why would Christians forsake the garden of the brethren? They don't know the importance of it. That's why we're teaching you these things. So it's not only so you don't say, hey, it's my life and it's with God. No. Now that we're born again, like Bojan said, we are in it together. Are you getting it? Are you getting it? Hallelujah. Say, I'm born again. I'm born of the Spirit. The Word of God works in me. Because I deal with anxieties. The Scripture are ways. Come on, shout hallelujah. Come on, shout hallelujah. Come on, shout hallelujah. Amen and amen. Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1. The things that we think about. Revelation chapter 1. Look at this five. You know, like I said, understand it. Where is Jesus today? He is in us. But where do we see him scripturally? He is in the local church. Can we get a believing amen? amen? That's where he is. When we look at the scriptures, look at the book of Revelations, the book of Revelations in that vision positions Jesus in the church amongst the saints. You know what? Let me say it this way. When we say that God is here, 
Because God is a spirit, people think that we are going to see God come like that's God, like in the smoke and all of those kind of things. But the book of Revelation tells us how we see God. Look at the book of Revelation chapter 1. Look at this thing. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. Verse 11, saying, so this person is saying, I am Alpha. I mean, Alpha is the Greek word for beginning. And I am Omega is the Greek word for the last. So he now interprets it. I am the first and the last. What you see, write in a book. And send it to the seven churches in Asia. Where does God lead? Where does God rule? God leads and rules in the local church. We always say, God doesn't have a country anywhere outside. God's country is Zion. It's the local church. That's why he instructs in Zion. That's why he has ministry gifts in Zion. That is why he says that we should gather together as a people. Can we get a believe in amen? amen? So we see it in verse 11 that he says, write and send it to the churches. Remember, he didn't say write this and send it to the governments. Are you hearing? Because the king, Christ's government is the church. So when he said the government shall be upon his shoulders, he was talking about the resurrection, bathing the church. Can you get a believe in amen? amen. All right, amen and amen. Let's continue. Look at verse 12. And I turned to see the voice that spoke with me, verse 12. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks, verse 13. And in the midst of the candlesticks, was one like the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and that with parts and with gadows. Okay, then he starts to ex describe this person he saw. Look at verse 20. The mystery of the seven stars, which thou saw in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks. Notice, he just said, I saw in a vision, seven golden candlesticks. Then he tells us in verse 20, what is the meaning of the candlesticks? Remember, John was in a vision. He now says, the seven stars are the angels, the pastors or the messengers of the seven churches. And the seven candlesticks, we thou saw it, are the seven churches. What is my point? If you go back, you, if you go back to verse 13, you will react. So now we have read that the golden candlesticks is the church. Amen? So in verse 13, we realize that the Son of Man, Jesus, was in the midst of the golden candlesticks. What is that revelation telling us? Jesus is in the midst of his church. See, Papa's life, but where is Jesus now? He's here. Amen. How is he here? He's in every one of us here seated. Yeah, that is because you must remember we walk by faith and not by sight. You know, for example, if we put out a logo, Jesus is coming to church today. Do you know that, in fact, just the same way it was in the time of Jesus, everybody will be filled here. They'll be expecting Jesus to come physically in his body. That's why we say the world does not know him, but the saints know him. They know that he is not, he is not with us as in a physical body. Are you hearing me? Yes, but we must believe the truth that when we gather, he is with us. Oh, Can I get a believe in amen? amen? We must believe that truth that when we are alone in our heart, he is with us. That's what it means to walk by faith and not by sight. What does it mean to walk by faith? You not act like Jesus is here, for he is. Your flesh will not see it. Now, if, for example, because I've had those kind of things before I'm preaching and people see angels and all those kind of things, those people are operating by a particular gift called the descending of spirits. But outside of that gift, you won't see anything. I remember when I, when I started preaching, and as I was preaching the gospel, you know, and, you know, my mom, my earthly mom, was quite concerned about some of the things I was saying. That what? This message you're preaching. And then she was in one of our services, Right? I didn't know anything I was preaching the way I normally do. As she was sitting there, and God helps her operate in the descending of spirit. And she sees angels all around. Interestingly, she sees, and for her, it helped her know that this guy was preaching the message. And it changed her mind. But remember, if she did not have the descending of spirit, were angels all around before then? Yes! Was Jesus here? Yes! But we must act that way. Are you hearing me? Yes, That's what faith is. We must act that way. We must see it that way. We must rejoice that way. Hallelujah. We are in a kingdom and our king is never absent. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. He is amongst the saints. We see it that way. You know, as that starts to dawn on you, it, it, it does something to you. 
that God is actually here. All of God is seated right here. How do I know that? For the saints are here. Tell me if you think that way and then you have a sickness in your body. How won't it be healed? How won't it be healed? For I know. I understand. I appreciate it as so. I act like so. The Father is here. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Lord. It's a cognition. It's a knowing. It's a knowing. In our kingdom, it's a knowing that it practice. Amen and amen. Amen. Amen and amen. amen. Amen and amen. And who is that master, our God, that is here? The one that lost us so. Say, God lost me so much. God lost me so much. Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. Let's get there. Romans chapter 5. Woo! Look at verse 8. I read from verse 7. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet paraventure for a good man would even some dare to die. Look at verse 8. But God, someone say, but God. But God. Come on, say, but God. But God. Commended. Come on, commended. Amen. His love His towards us. Towards that while we are yet sinners, we are yet sinners. He, died he died for us. Come on, while we are yet sinners, he died for us. That verse is an explosion of the grace of God. Listen to what you just said. You said, while we were yet... This is the scandal of God. While we were yet sinners, his activity was sure. You know when we say that God loves everybody, people have a problem with it. But he does. You know one of the greatest pains that of hell do you want to hear one of the greatest pains of hell? A man in hell, the, mo the thing that will trouble the man in hell the most is the fact that he will now realize that what it took for him not to be there was just to say, yes, I believe you. You know, it's heart-wrenching. He would realize that it wasn't actually difficult because the real difficulty was taken away because Jesus Christ had paid the price. The heart-wrenching reality, and that's what we preach. That's why we live for him. Give it, that's why we do what we do. That name. And I want, I, want, I want to encourage you. Spend your life well. Okay, if it was before, I've told you to tell your neighbor, spend your life well. But tell yourself. Tell, say Vandros. Okay, call your name. I'm Vandros. Yeah? Say Vandros. Tell yourself, Vandros. Spend your life well. Live for Jesus. You know, you know, I have it in my mind that many people will come to me, Vandros, on that day and say, thank you. It was the message that you preached. That you thought nobody heard. That I heard that God missing it. Ah! What will have happened? You know, you would know the people that prayed for you. You know, because in that realm, all of knowledge becomes a reality. You know, like I always say, I already know that day if precious oh really loves me. It has been an issue in my heart. Does she or does she know? That day I know. But amongst our signs of precious old issue are other matters. Who prayed for us? Oh, what what? So it was Adi that was praying that made Brother Elijah come. Oh, thank you, Adi. The, the people in hell would realize. Oh, Adi Allah told me. Oh, she told me. And that's going to be a torment eternal. That's why we live for him. That's why you must understand that the world will come with all of his distractions. And I get it. But live for that man. Jesus, who lived for me. All of the glories of the world. All of the beauties of the world. Don't let it distract you. You are what you are. An ambassador. Live for him. Live for him. You know, for your very action might be the reason why so far, they don't treat us like this now. Nah, it's not real. Your very action might be the reason why one person just killed us. Your very, it might just be that very thing they, they heard, they read, they saw, that place you went, that thing you said. And understand the way the, 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 the kingdom works. The kingdom, the Bible says the kingdom of God is as a seed. It's planted. You can't plant maize today. If it, it grows, it, uh, if it grows immediately and we are seeing the corn, you should be scared. So keep planting. You see, for many of us, we enter, when people get saved, 
It's because we enter into the labors of others. For a man to be saved, prayer has gone into it. The word has gone into it. It's when it matures. If somebody is there, the person gets saved. We entered into some people's labors. But we too have to give our own labors. Are you hearing me? Amen. That's the way it is. Because the kingdom is as a seed. So we cannot live like, you know what? We are here on an El Dorado. Life is not a dress rehearsal. The reality of the gospel is there is death. Eternal death. And you know, eternal death is, the, is eternal. The reason why death is not a pang that hits men for who are believers today is because we have a hope. We know that we will see men again. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Church, hallelujah. Praise Church, hallelujah. Praise Say, leave. Say, I will leave. I will leave for Jesus. Look at Romans 5, verse 8. That's where we are. It says, but God commended his law. This is the display of God's law. God commended his law towards us that while we were yet sinners, he died for us. While we were yet sinners, what did he do? He died. While we were yet sinners, what did he do? He died. I'm going to read you a parable very soon. To help you, what, say, Pastor Dayo, why do you teach about the fact that sins have been forgiven? I'll tell you why. Everybody acts normal until he understands that he has been forgiven much. And when he understands that he has been forgiven much, what happens to him? He loves much. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? That's why we, see, who was, who was I before I received the gospel? I was not a sinner. I was dead in sin. You know, sin, a sinner is like maybe an activity. I just sinned. Maybe it's that I don't sin, I won't sin tomorrow. No, your very existence is sin. That's what nature is. Are you hearing me? That's that see, and that you know that's why it's very, very funny. People say things like, oh really, you know what? Are you born again? He say, no, I'm not I'm not I'm not born again, but you know what? I don't steal, I don't smoke. Who drinks water from a gutter? It's not about I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't humanize. It's the fact that your very existence is sin. Are you getting this matter? Hallelujah. So, for example, two people are not born again. One person is a murderer. The other person is a liar. They are both unbelievers. They are dead in sin. sin. You must know it. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh, but God commended his love towards us. That while we are yet, that's, that, is, that is what breaks the heart of the listener. While we are yet, he didn't ask for my, why I was yet dead in sin. He died for me. This is, the, this is the I love you moment for the sin. This is where the sin makes up his mind to live for the Lord. While I was yet dead in sin. He meaning you didn't ask me of anything. Look at the book of Luke chapter 7. Luke chapter 7. Luke chapter 7. Okay. I will start to read from verse 37. I'll read verse 36. And one of the Pharisees, you know the Pharisees were these guys that thought that they were perfect, but interestingly they were not. The Pharisees decide, desired him that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet, meaning Jesus sat down to eat, Jesus ate. They asked Jesus to come to their house and he went, right? Look at verse 37. And behold, a woman in the, sin, in the city, which was a sinner. Are you noticing what's happening here? The, who was the Pharisee in the eyes of God? A sinner. Who was the sinner in the eyes of God? A sinner. But you know what has happened in this city? Because the Pharisees kept some certain laws, they felt that they were better than the sinner. sinner. You know, you know, a sinner is not a name. How many people are sure that a sinner is not a name? Would anybody name his child sinner? No, you won't do that. You, you can't do that. Are, are you hearing me? Yes. Yeah. But what has happened here? They have described that by activity to the point that it is stamped. Hallelujah. Praise yeah, look at it. It's just like when we say Thomas the Delta. I hope you know that the Delta is not a sunny. But we have added it to it because of his activity. He didn't believe. Really. Look at it. So they call her the sinner, but from this story, the two of them were sinners in the eyes of God. Look at it. The Bible says in verse 37, And behold, a woman in the city who was called a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat, when she knew in the in the Pharisee's house, she brought an alabaster box of ointment. Notice what happened to the sinner. The sinner heard about Jesus. 
What made her come with an alabaster box? You would understand the mystery of living for God from this, if you hear me clearly. This woman heard about Jesus. Then she heard that Jesus was in the Pharisee's house. Then being the Pharisee is the holy, 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 holier than thou guy. She is the sinner. Then she takes a very prized possession and she goes to meet Jesus in the Pharisee's house that she normally should not go into. And then she breaks the alabaster box, which according to history was thousands of pounds and pours it on Jesus. And starts to use her head to wash him. What did she hear about Jesus? She heard what we are hearing today. Because you are just going to say, she heard that Jesus was a forgiver. I'll say it again. She heard that Jesus was a forgiver. Why? Why did she come with an alabaster box and supply the alabaster box to Jesus? Because she understood that she was a big time sinner. Are you getting it? She understood. You know sometimes, when we don't understand that our na by nature, man before Christ was sin. We don't appreciate what he has done in grace. Are you getting my point? Mm -hmm. But this woman, who by activity was a sinner, that they nicknamed a sinner. You know, like I always say, living for the Lord becomes clear. And the only way you can go, when you understand how much you've been forgiven. Look at it. What does this woman start to do? She starts to worship with her own things. Her own expensive things. An alabaster box that was expensive. If you read other versions, Judas Iscariot was angry. He said, why didn't we sell this thing? And go and, 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 go and use it to do things for the poor. Uh, the other version says, and the disciples were angry. Why? It was very expensive. So even the disciples, they don't understand the mystery of how much they have been forgiven or they will be forgiven. Let's say it in context. But this woman got it. Why did she get it? She knew that even by her actions, she was bad. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is why you realize that when someone that was a bad boy, oh, for what it tells you, it's like when someone that was a bad boy, or a bad girl, gets born again, they are never, never pa passing. They're always on fire. It's because of that thought is that they know that they are bad. But we are, what are we telling the same? We are saying that, see, that person is looking at it from a point of view of his activities. But for you, you must understand that live activities by nature will be a dead in sin. Are you getting the point now? Yes, yes. If, you don't, if you don't understand that by nature we are dead in sin, we will not see the, the reality of living for him. Let's continue. Look at verse 39. So this man, this Jesus, she's, okay, let's look at verse 38. She stood at his feet behind him. She was weeping. Why was she crying? She was weeping at the extent of the reality of the fact that, my God, I have finally met somebody that is a forgiver. Mm. Are you getting it? Yes. Look at it. It says, and she began to wash his feet. Why was she serving him? Why would you not serve the man who, has, who would take away all your sins? Are you getting the point? Mm. Christian service ought to be born out there of the revelation. You can write that down. Christian service is born out of the revelation of what God has done for us in Christ. Christian service is born out of the revelation of God being a forgiver. When I realize that I'm dead in sin, and I realize that I was not just a sinner, you know some people say, before I was born again, I was not really that bad. You know? No, that's not the point. You were dead in sin. Everybody was the same. Are you getting it? And everybody was the same. A drug addict, somebody that was just a normal person, was everybody the same. Why? By nature, sin. Who was their master? The devil. What did they have as a nature? The same nature. When, when do our activities start to change? When we understand that, you see, it will be a death in sin, and then he died for us. And what he did was a big deal. Look at it again. This woman starts to serve she is now doing work. She is now wiping with her hair. You know, she's wiping with her hair. I don't want to crack joke, but she's wiping with her hair. You know, sometimes in, in service, in serving the Lord, in doing the things of the Lord, we say, ah, that one, we can't touch it. Oh, that one, we cannot. No, 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 no. In service of our master, love has done something to us. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Look at it. He says, and she kissed his feet. 
anointed them with ointment. Look at verse 39. You know, have you met people who are passionate for the things of the Lord? And they're serving the Lord out of the fact of how much he has done for them. And a lot of people are saying, that, what's wrong with you? Are you the only one? How many people have happened to you before? Are you the only one? Oh, nobody shouting, ah, you love Jesus. Are you the only one? The person talking doesn't know how much he has been forgiven. That is how Pharisees talk. When you see anybody serving the Lord zealously, and you are not there, say, oh Lord, help me grow to be here. Never say things like, are you the only one? Are you the only Christian? Uh -uh. Only you, when it's time for prayer, you will come. Never talk like that. Never talk like that. Rather say, oh, that I may grow in the revelation. What is making this man do this? When this woman breaks another pastor box, the disciples of Jesus are angry. The Pharisees are angry. Why? It was expensive. Anything any man gives for the Lord, from a revelation of what God has done for him, never say, ah, 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 ah. no. He said, oh, that I may grow to do this. That I may get, that I may see what is driving this guy. Oh, that he might drive me. Can I get a believing amen? amen? Yeah, look at it. Now the Pharisees, verse 39. Now the Pharisees, which had beaten him, saw it. They spoke within themselves. You see, they are gossiping now. If this man knew, you know, if this man knew, and was really a prophet, he would have known what manner of woman it is that is touching him. For she is a sinner. Are you, are you seeing what the Pharisees are saying? Jesus, the one that has full knowledge, he knows that all men are what? Sinners. Hallelujah. What does the Pharisee do? The Pharisee is gossiping with another Pharisee. Saying, if this man was a prophet, he will know that the person that is touching him, meaning by law, they had really demarcated that woman from amongst them, that she could not come around them. Because they have given her a nickname, sinner. But what do we see her do? She has a revelation they don't have. Jesus will tell us that revelation. Remember, let it be that it's revelation that gets him acting. Can I get a believing amen? amen. That's why we, grow. we are to pray that we grow in our knowledge of the Lord. As we grow in our knowledge of the Lord, it affects how we do. That is why, listen carefully, the greatest prayer you can pray for a brother or a sister is that he grows in, his eyes of understanding is enlightened. When a man's understanding is enlightened, it affects his work over a period of time. Did you get what I just said? When, see, when a man's understanding is enlightened, do you know that we did not put any notice out that everybody should come today and they should come with clothes? Everybody can look at your neighbor. Is anybody naked beside you? Why? There's an understanding. Human beings wear clothes outside. Are you hearing that? You know we didn't have to pray. And for ah, ah Lord God. We say we call the prayer team together. Sister Sarah, Sister Essay, Sister Sarah, come together now. We are praying. We are going to be praying right now for Sister Moja. That as she comes on Sunday, she will not come naked. You don't come pray that way. We can't do that. Why? There is understanding that she's got. You know, the more people have understanding, the better they behave. We face other things that are important. Mm -hmm. Are you getting it? Yeah. So that, so that brother, that sister, that, pray that they... See, don't, don't be fooled. Evil, pray for me. Is that not what Paul said? Pray for me. Don't be fooled by how if people are walking about acting like they know. People can cram. Understanding affects your work. Wow. Just, ah, ah, ah. When Pastor Dyer is saying Romans chapter 3, he gives us the beginning and he ends with Pastor Dyer. I can't say he doesn't know the word. When Pastor Dyer says, For God so loved the word, he's already saying that he gave us. You know, there's a rule like that. As the man of God, or whoever is preaching, is preaching, as he's quoting John chapter 3, he's already saying verse 16. When the man of God is saying, Now open your book or your, your Bible, first John chapter, the Bible says 4 4 8. <laughs> you know, no, no, like that. Say, I don't know, I know him now. Ah. Uh, but that just say, we are teaching on the reign of grace. Open your Bible to Romans and say 5 8. The people are not going to say, wow, you are deep. So, when you see, we know how people have understood the message. You know, when I was preaching the gospel in 2005, I was preaching the gospel. I was so excited, but people were not changing. So, I went to my mentor. Sir, I preached everything. He was just laughing. I said, I preached this thing, but what was happening? People are not changing. He said, they don't get it yet. It, it says, preach the gospel. Till people understand it. He said, how, and I said, how will I know that people have understood it? He said, you see it in our belief. Mm -hmm. wow. That's what ended my complaint as a pastor. 2005. You, if they don't understand, if they don't act, they don't understand. 
when you live for others, you are living for me. Then the person goes and says, is he living for others? Is he serving others? So when you are serving the person you are serving, you are not serving the person because of the person is good, the person is nice, the person said thank you. You are serving and loving and calling and reaching and praying for people because of what the person above did for you. Hallelujah. Are you getting Christianity? Yeah. That is the reign of grace. It's not when they are forcing you to do things. You are frowning. You don't get it. So you pray that my eyes will see this thing. The Pharisee thought he was smart. He was saying, look at that one. If he knew, if he, if he knew that lady was a sinner, he would not have her around her. Jesus turned and says, do you know what has happened here? Look at the parable. She understands she has been forgiven much. Oh, lift up your hands and say, Father, I thank you. That I have been forgiven much. That I have been forgiven much. Because Jesus tells us here, look at it. He says, he asked Simon, who will love the most? That's how 42 ends. We are in Luke 7, 42. Then 43 says, Simon answered and said, I suppose to whom you forgave most. And Jesus said, thou hast judged rightly. Verse 44. And he turned to the woman and said to the woman, seest thou this woman? I entered into thy house. Thou gave me Thou gave me no water for my feet, but she had washed my feet with tears and wiped them. Her service was born out of the fact that she knew that she had been forgiven. Look at it. And wiped them with her hair. The hair of her head. Think about it. The hair of her head. She used to clean Jesus' feet. Dusty feet of Jesus. How do we know it was dusty? Jesus is a Jew. Go to Israel, it's dusty. He didn't say, ah, my hair. You don't understand, oh, Jesus. This is Peruvian man. Latest braids. Latest style. This one was just released. 2020, 2020 spec, summer. <laughs> my hair on your leg. Sister and you are right there. <laughs> oh, dear God. Everything becomes meaningless. In front of the master who gave up on you. Hallelujah. Woo. That's why we pray Woo. that I will see this thing. That I will get it. Let's pray right now. Let's pray that our eyes of understanding in life. Don't open your mouth wherever it is that you are. Pray right now. That you will see more. That you will know more. That you will get it much more. Come on, let's pray right now. Manta kalaba korobo saka tabalaya. Come on, menten telega doste kani. Menti lakro beka tizus. Nempra ala katole bakita yi. Menta kele go se katala da haste. Mante kele ko bala katamala. Shatre o patata ya. Oh, that I will see. That I will know. That I will comprehend. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at the word of God. Look at it. Look at it. Look at where in verse 44. Which he just said, he just said, wipe my ear. My, wipe my, 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 she, okay. Wash my feet with her tears and wipe them with the air of her hair. Verse 45. Okay. Thou givest me no kiss. You see, there was affection. See, you, you serve the Lord with your emotions. Affectionate. Thou givest me no kiss. As a Christian all the time, you're serving the Lord, you're in the choir, you're frowning. Who told you to sing? Go and sit down. You're from. Praise the Lord, Ali. Lift him, Ali. Ali. Why? Go sit down. The place of service is for lovers who know they belong. Rejoice! Thank you, Father. When we find people like that, now we don't condemn them. We pray. We pray. He doesn't get it. Don't stop laughing. Even you, you don't get it. I don't know what that means. What? 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 
She can't be a diva in the house of the Lord. And, and you are serious. Maraka tapa hazaga. Ah, this is destiny. You know, that's what we're doing. They say, glory, rejoice. Someone that washed your sins away. Say, Pastor, that, how are you treading on with this message? I'm not threatening you, I'm just telling you. You were dead in sin and someone gave you life and they said, rejoice. You're like, glory. <laughs> glory, oh. <laughs> God is good, you know. You know. So, yay. Brother, brother, it like, really was my sin, so no. No, 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 no. It is, it, it's, what I mean, with your affections, with your emotions, you're serving him with your life. Hallelujah. Your life. Oh, yeah, basote. This is what we're talking about. Thank you, Jesus. He died for me. Hallelujah. Church, hallelujah. Church, hallelujah. Look at 45. Thou givest me no kiss. But this woman, since the time I came, since the time I came, has not ceased. Mm. Hear me, brothers and sisters. Those that say things like, I'm going now, I'm going now. Stop and look again at the one that loved you. Stop and look again. Going out means you are looking everywhere. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stop and look again. Set your gaze on him. Set your gaze on him again. Now much because the Bible says she did not cease to kiss since I came. So consistency in service is a continuous revelation of his love for me. Consistency in service is a continuous revelation of his love for me. She did not cease. You know the story in the book of Revelation about a particular church? Who they started up very wonderful. Jesus said they have forgotten their first love. How many people remember that? Yes. They've forgotten. So it can happen. How do you forget your first love? You are about all other things. Yeah. Never make anything or anyone make Jesus number two in your life. Yeah. Woo. Uh, good. It's not worth it. Never make, see, any relationship that makes God number two is not where you should be. Any job that makes God number two, believe for a greater one. Yes. Amen. Anything, don't make it okay that Jesus is number two in your life. Amen. You can't make God a side chick. Wow. Wow. You can't. He died for you. How can someone take a bullet for you and marry another? We died here. <laughs> ah, are you getting me? Yes. And like I take a bullet for you and I didn't die. I'm in the hospital and I propose. All things being equal, you know that you know what? Who you love is brother light or we kill him. <laughs> we kill him. Well, are, you, are we laughing here? Can you take a bullet for yourself? Someone has to bullet for themselves and they died. Are you catching the point? Yeah. I want to say something. It's funny, it's serious. Okay. Look at it. What did I say? Consistency in service is a function of consistent revelation of his love for you. When you take your eyes away from how much he loves you, you can burn out. Yeah. It's the same thing that happened in Matthew 14. Peter is walking on water. He takes his eyes away from the Lord. He notices waves. Don't let anybody say, ah, ah. <laughs> what ah, they are serving the Lord. Continue serving the Lord. When will you marry? When will you this? When will you that? You know, say it's true, it's true. If I continue like this, how about don't talk like that? Christ. Christ, ever number one. Any see, any relationship, any fellowship, any friendship that actually prioritizes to make I didn't say Christ is number two, number three. Number two is not healthy for him. It's not healthy for you. Hallelujah. Those who have tried it, they've gone away. That's the, that's the trick of the devil. Any relationship, friendship, association, even if a pastor makes God number two, he should not be your pastor. It must be number one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at it. 46. My, okay, he says, since I came in, 45, since I came in, this woman has not ceased to kiss my feet. 46. My head with all thou did not anoint. So he's telling the Pharisees what they did not do. 
is telling the woman what is telling them what the woman did and the implication. But this woman had anointed my feet with ointment. Verse 47. Wherefore I say, our sins, are you seeing it here? Mm. Our sins, which are many, are forgiven. Follow. Follow. See, she didn't serve God so that God will forgive her sins. You will see there. It is the revelation that God is a forgiver that made her serve. Because you will see later there that God says, your faith has made you whole. So faith in me as the forgiver is what made her do what she did. Are you getting it? Yes, sir. Wherefore I say unto you, her sins which are, are many are forgiven. She loved much. Look at it. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. What is it? When a man thinks God forgave him little, he will not see it. He will not see living for him as the topmost priority in his life. Say, I'm a servant of righteousness. Look at verse 48. And, has, and he said unto her, Thy sins are forgiven. 49. You're like, okay, maybe she served him. And then he now said, Your sins are forgiven. Follow it. He now says, And they that sat at meat began to say within themselves, Who is this that forgiveth sins also? Verse 50. And he said to the woman, Thy faith has saved thee. What is faith? Believing in something that you did not see. So what happened to this woman? She believed that God was a forgiver. In that believing he was a forgiver, she came to him and served her with her life. And with her most precious valuable. Because she saw him as forgiver. She believed in him as forgiver. Can I get a believing amen? amen? Why do we say all of this? It's the revelation that you need to get there. He that is forgiving much loves much. What is my job today? To help you see that you have been forgiven much. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1. We round up now. Ephesians 2 verse 1. See, I've been forgiven much. I've been forgiven much. When people ask you and tell you, why are you so consistent? Why are you so this? For the Lord, for the Lord, for you. Why are you always? Why are you always? Answer them the scripture always. I have been forgiven much. Don't let anything, anyone, only one person died for you. Don't let anyone make you be the esteem, this esteem what God has done for you. Wow. Never. No, 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 no. It must remain burning in your heart. You must forever remember it. I have been forgiven much. Do you know that it is this? I have been forgiven much. I love much. That affects who I marry, where I go, what I do, how I do what I do. Because you know that you are now a living sacrifice. Hallelujah. Men and women, don't compromise. On, on any level, don't compromise. You are already one that has been forgiven much. If the Bible says, if sinners come and consent thee to sin, or, or tell you to sin, consent thee not. Meaning that if people say, let's come and do sin, don't allow, don't agree. Why? What are we saying since? I have been forgiven much. How do we know? Ephesians 2 verse 1 tells you. And you are the quicken. Who were what? Dead in trespasses and sins. Who was I? Dead in sin. Dead. I was dead. 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 I, I, not a sinner. I was dead. No life. Wherein in past that time past, you walk according to how you like the course of this world. They say the prince of the, of the power of the earth, meaning that your father was the devil. Right? The spirit are now walking in the children of disobedience. Among whom you also had your conduct in time past. In the lust of the flesh. This is fulfilling the desires of the flesh. The mind. And by nature you were a child of wrath. Even many others. Look at verse 4. Someone say, but God. Who is rich in mercy. For his great love. Where which he loved us. When we were dead in sin. He has quickened us together in Christ. That's the message. That is the reign of grace now gives you the room to serve. And you're serving other men, thinking of the one. Christianity is actually you living for the person that lived for you. 
Hallelujah. 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 Church, hallelujah. Living for that person. So the Bible now calls us. Let's look at that scripture. Romans 6. And we conclude. Romans chapter 6. We're done. Romans chapter 6. Is someone being blessed already tonight? Yes, sir. All right. Look at it. Romans chapter 6. I'm going to read through this. And then we're done. Romans chapter 6. All right. Look at verse 15. What then shall we say? What then shall we sing? Because we are not under the law, but under grace. Look at verse 15. It says, you know, I told you last week that there are two types of sin it talks about in this chapter. I said the first one is amatia, which is the nature of sin. And the next one is amatanu, which is the activity of sin. So he's now saying in here, it's the, he says, what day shall we continue in the activity of sin because we are not under the law, but now under grace? He says, God forbid. Look at verse 16. Know ye not that whom you yield yourself servant to obey, his servant you are to whom you obey, whether to sin of sin unto righteousness, or of obedience of, of sin unto death, or righteousness unto um, of obedience unto righteousness. Look at verse 17. But God be thanked. Someone say, Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He says, But God be thanked, ye were the servants of sin. You are a God. You are a master, the devil. But you have obeyed the gospel from your heart. The form of doctrine which was delivered to you. You have now been made free from the sin nature and the activities of sin. You have now become servants of righteousness. What did now say that you should do? It tells you in the next verses below. It says, therefore now, yield your members. Make them instruments of righteousness. So what do we do? In understanding that he died for us, we use our lives, our members, not to serve sin. One, I mean, not to serve self. I mean, not to live according to the lust of this world. The pride of life. Mm. But to live for him. How do we live for him? We live for him. Making the law walk the ultimate. Can I get a believing amen? amen? So the spirit that is in us now is the spirit of love. But the driver of you is the fact that someone has forgiven you much. When you forget that you have been forgiven much, it becomes difficult to do the work. It, be it becomes difficult to give thanks always for this is the will of God for sending you. It becomes difficult to pray without ceasing. It becomes difficult to thank God always for I say again, rejoice in the will of God and send you. It becomes difficult to speak in tongues. So when you speak in tongues, you speak unto me. What am I saying? When you forget that the Lord walk, the Lord walk, what the Lord the Father has for you is what drives your love walk. Doing the word becomes difficult. Lift up, rise up and pray this evening. Rise upon your feet this evening. Rise upon your feet this evening. You're going to pray for yourself. Lord, you're going to pray again. Open my eyes of understanding. I might, you might have understood the gospel to an extent. Say, Lord, I want a, a deeper, a greater revelation of that law. Because I know that particular revelation would have kept my walk over a period of time. Come on, pray tonight as we close this service. Church, I want you to pray tonight. Open up your mouth and pray. 